In this video, I'm going to talk about the greatest common factor, which is sometimes called GCF, just for short, the greatest common factor. And this will help us on our way to factoring, which is a major, major concept in algebra and will be a major concept in this class. So greatest common factor, to be able to factor it, you want to identify the coefficients, the variables like x, y, z, and, and maybe even an expression like a binomial like x plus 2. Okay, so let's take a look at an example and see how this works. So a simple example might be to find the greatest common factor between 10x and 90x squared. Well, what is the greatest common factor between 10 and 90? Okay, well 10 is a factor of 90, right? Because 9 times 10 is 90. So we could actually say that 10 out of 10 and 90 10 is the greatest common factor. Well, what about x and x squared? Well, x is a factor of x squared, because x squared is x times x. So x would be it. So actually, the greatest common factor between 10x and 90x squared is 10x. All right. Let's look at this example. We have 8x to the 11th, negative 72x to the 9th, and 16x to the 5th. All right, well, out of these three numbers, 8, negative 72, and 16, what's the largest common factor we can find? 8, negative 72, and 16? Well, I think the greatest common factor between those numbers would be 8, okay? We have x to the 11th, x to the 9th, and x to the 5th. Well, what's the greatest common factor out of the x's? I would say it's x to the fifth. Okay, so that is the greatest common factor between those three, those three monomials. Okay, moving on. So now we're going to factor out the greatest common factor out of this expression here, x squared minus 11x. So what is the greatest common factor between x squared minus 11x? Well, this x squared here has a coefficient of 1, and we don't usually write 1, but so there's going to be like a kind of a silent 1 written here. And then we have to choose from x squared or x, so what's the factor we can pull out? We can pull out an x, right? Because x times x is x squared. So what did we leave behind? Well, I'm going to put in parentheses what we left behind. So here we left behind an x because x times x is x squared. And then we left behind a negative 11 here. Okay, so I factored out an x. Factored out an x. So this would be our first factoring problem that we accomplished. All right. Well, what about this one? We have 14a cubed plus 50ab squared. Okay, well, out of 14 and 50, what can we factor? Well, um, I don't think 14 is a factor of 50, so we'll have to go a little smaller than 14. Um, 14 and 50 are both even, so we can at least factor out a 2. 14 is 2 times 7, and 7 isn't a factor of 50, so it looks like we can only factor out 2 here. Then we have a cubed, and then we have a. So for the a's, it looks like I can only factor out 1a. And then here, I see that this term has a b squared, but the first term doesn't have a b at all, so I can't factor out a b at all. All right, well, what did I leave behind? Well, 2 times some number is 14. 2 times 7 is 14. And then a times something is a cubed. Must be a squared. Then... What number times 2 is 50, but 25? And then we already factored out the a, but we didn't factor out the b squared. Okay, So this would be the final answer, and we factored out a 2a out of this expression here. All right. Next, we have something that's a little strange. We want to factor out the greatest common factor. I have 16x times the group x plus 3 plus 11 times the group x plus 3. Well, what's the greatest common factor? The greatest common factor is actually this binomial right here. OK, 
Okay, so if I factor that out, since they share that, x plus 3, what did I leave behind? I left behind a 16x and an 11. So this would be fully factored, because the greatest common factor was actually a binomial and not just a single number. My power just went out, but I think I'm still recording. Um, so what about this one? Well, very similar. It's x plus 3, x plus 3. Okay, so I can factor out x plus 3. And what did I leave behind? 4x plus 9. Okay, so that would be fully factored right there. Let's go to the next problem. All right, this one, this is a mess, right? So I have 5s times x minus 6y plus 2t times x minus 6y plus 4 times x minus 6y. Well, what's the greatest common factor? It's this binomial. So I'm going to factor out that binomial. x minus 6y. What did I leave behind? 5s plus 2t plus 4. And so that would be factored out. I factored out x minus 6y. Okay. Now when you do these problems, you, you do want to check and make sure that you couldn't factor again. But it doesn't look like they share anything. 5, 2, and 4. Well, they have to share something for all. 2 and 4 both share 2, but they don't with 5. So this is fully factored. Okay. Well, that's greatest common factor. Um, so join me for the next video to find lowest um, leading coefficient of 1. All right.